this Browns defense, which you were calling out before the year, you were saying like, watch Jim Schwartz. He's got a lot of mm-hmm. toys. This is going to be really interesting. They have been so dominant in these three games that I'm starting to wonder, everyone's talking about Miami this week and we're going to talk about them in a second. You wrote yeah. about them mm-hmm. for Vista today. Everyone's talking about Miami. Oh my God, historic offense. A historic defense is more sustainable in December mm-hmm. and January. And I, I, I guess my first question is, are we focused enough on the Browns right now? I don't think we are. So let, let's go back. So Chubb gets injured, right? And everybody mails the season in on poor Chubb. Well, then they play Tennessee, and that line was three and a half. It was a, it was a really stupid line. Tennessee can't move the ball against Ocean City High School. I mean, they're not a good offense. I know they beat the Chargers, but that's the Chargers. Uh, and so they had to throw the ball. And this was a coming out game, I think, for Watson. He threw the ball effectively. But this defense, they would they could have won the game 12-9. They could have won the game 12-3. They're really that good. When you study Schwartz's career, you've never, when he plays the wide nine, you've never been able to run the ball on him because he's really good at teaching run fits. You know, everybody, you hear this rhetoric, Bill. Oh, they're in a nine man, they're in an eight man front. Okay, that's great. But sometimes if you're if you're on the not on the same level of the eight man front, you're really not in an eight man front. You know, your levels are distorted. Everything gets kind of it's like a zone. If you're not playing it correctly, it gets messed up. So his run fits are really good. And you can't run bootlegs or naked on him because his ends are too wide. So you take away a whole element of some easy throws for a quarterback. And they run to the football. And then when they get into a passing situation, now he's taking Garrett and moving them all over the place. And he says, okay, who's your worst lineman? Okay, I got that. Here comes Garrett. Now you block him one-on-one. Right. The other misconception about football is it's like basketball. If you have a bad line and Tennessee doesn't have a good line, don't rush three and don't rush four. Because somebody can double team somebody on three. But if you have a shitty line, rush five. Because that means somebody has to block one on one all the time. And that's what Schwartz did. And then it gets Garrett. I mean, he had him on Ted Karras. I love Ted Karras. We drafted him in New England. Great kid, tough guy. But one on one with Miles Garrett and, you know, driving to the lane, that's going to be two points every time. And that's what he did. So this defense is good enough to carry him. They're fast, they're athletic. All Watson has to do is not screw it up. So I was looking at the 2000 Ravens, which I think is the benchmark team for, can you just win with a great defense and by not Mm -hmm. making mistakes? They scored 333 points and gave up 165 Mm -hmm. in a whole, in a 16 game season. In the playoffs, they only allowed 23 points in four games. So they allowed 188 points total in 20 games. They had seven games of nine points or less. They had four games that year of nine first downs or less. Cleveland has three games of nine first downs or less already. Nobody's gotten a <laughs> 10 first downs of them. And you can go through and you could say, all right, week one, Burrow's hurt, right? Bad spot for Burrow. Nobody realizes Cleveland's team was that good. Week two, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh scored two touchdowns with their offense, but, uh, you know, pick it. He's still figuring it out. They can't run the ball. Najee yeah. Harris looks like Trent Richardson right before he traded him. All right, that makes sense. Then Tennessee, Tannehill, their line stinks. So they haven't really... So Lamar will be the first real test, but I'm looking at that game and I'm going, well, Baltimore's as banged up on their offensive line as anybody. And they have the speed to stay with Lamar, especially if he tries to move around the pocket. Like To me, this feels like a terrible matchup for Baltimore. You agree? I agree completely. Especially if Lindstrom and Stanley are still out. And, you know, you got... Schwartz is going to attack. The one thing Schwartz is always very good at doing is attacking the protection. So not only does he know how to get the matchups, he knows how to attack the protections on third down. Then it becomes a really complicated game and he gets free runners. Yeah, this will be a hard one because, you know, now they won't have Gus Edwards for the running back. He's in concussion protocol. And what we've learned about concussion protocol this year with this five-step rule that they have is you go with it. You're not coming out for at least another week. You're going you're out a week. You're not coming out like in three days. You know, this I, isn't we, we like Remember, that, right? I, I like the way they're doing it this year. I think it's the right way to do it. I, I think it solves the coach's problem from guessing. Mm. Like you don't have to, the coach now no longer, am I have the guy or not have the guy? He doesn't practice all week. So, so it eliminates all that crap. One thing about coaching for a gate, once you know you don't have the guy, you can work around it. It's when you think you have the guy, you can't work around it. Right. That's the problem. So I don't have a problem with it at all. And I think what 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 we see there 
Edwards in concussion. They don't have a, you know, is Lamar going to be the guy? It's going to be hard to get on the edge. I think with, I don't know if they'll get Newsom back their corner, but look, Martin Emerson Jr. is a really good corner. Ward's an outstanding corner. You know, I mean, they've got talent on all levels on this Cleveland Brown defense. They really are. And that grass in Cleveland is thick. It, it's going to be a slower track and it yeah. helps the Brownies. And the fans like the team and they have a good home field advantage if the fans like the team. Yeah. Um, they're only favored by two and a half, which I was surprised by. Um, what I, you said I, about I Watson. Three and a, I thought it was three and a half. Really? It's two and a half now. It's down to two and yeah, a half. It's down, to, probably, down to two wow. and a half. Um, what you said about Watson, I felt the same way and I couldn't tell, you know, once you, that game was over almost immediately. Once it was 13-3, it was like, that's it. Tennessee can't yeah. do anything. They can't run the ball. They're not going to be able to throw it. This is a wrap. But he did gain confidence and there's still, he still has that physicality to him when he's moving around and guys are bouncing off him and, you know, this doesn't look like a, you know, the, the stereotypical like, oh, we traded for this older QB. He's 34 yeah. now. He could still, like he's, conceivably physically in his prime. But that was the first time I felt like, oh, that kind of looked like Deshaun. Yeah. Right? Did you that feel that way? The first time. Oh, I thought completely. And he was confident. He was moving around. I thought he really was back. Now, you know, I wrote about him this week. I think he misses Will Fuller. I think he, he needs a down-the-field guy that makes plays. Remember when he was good with Will Fuller? Oh, I mean, yeah. Will Fuller bailed him out a lot of times. And maybe Cooper can be that guy. But... I think the pressure being on them, they hey has to throw the ball more effectively. Yeah. I mean, look, they, they didn't run the ball. You couldn't run the ball against the Titans. I mean, that was the one thing. People say, well, they don't have Chubb. How are they going to beat the Titans? Well, they weren't beating the running the ball with Chubb anyway. Yeah. The, the Titans are hard to run the ball on. You got to throw it on the Titans. And you got to prove that. And he did. So that's a huge step. And Baltimore, look, I mean, I went Minshew at like 44 pay. I mean, it was it was a, a thousand paper cuts, but they were really good. They had 22 third downs in that game in Indianapolis. So they didn't really make an explosive play, but they made a lot, they got a lot of first down. They were in third down quite a bit, which tells you they were holding on to the ball. So if the 2000s ra- 2000 Ravens is kind of your your North Star for this team, do you coach it differently if you're Stefanski? Do you yeah. become way less aggressive once you have a lead that does are you just doing everything safe what do you do i think if you if you're stefanski you know that unless we turn this thing over first of all on monday today's tuesday right you sit in your office and you're playing a team like let's say you're the you're playing a team but cleveland's playing baltimore you say how many points do you think it's going to take to win the game and you know let's say if we score 24 we can beat baltimore well, then you got to manage the game according because they're going to have a hard time scoring 24. That That's yeah. what makes the 49ers so good. Think about this. Nobody talks about this at all. Wisniewski, the punter for the 49ers, is the best inside the punter kicker in the league by far. He gets He's unbelievable. So it, they always move the ball. They get it to midfield. They get it to their own, maybe their own 40. Okay, they punt. Now you have the ball first and 10 at your own eight. Against that defense, it's hard to go 12 plays down the field and score. It's hard. You're going to screw it up somewhere along the way. And if you do it once, God bless. Can you do it three times for 21 points? No chance. You're not doing it three. I don't care how good you are. And that's the way the Browns have to play. Play field position. Make them go on a long way. They're not throwing the ball over our head. They don't have enough time. And yeah. you can win a lot of games. It's 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 a lot like you know, the, the the difference between professional tennis and amateur tennis. The amateur hits the ball into the net. The pro hits shots that the other guy can't return. That's the way you have to play. Like, you're not playing conservative. You're playing a professional game. You're just letting them screw it up. And that's what I think the Browns should do. And they can do enough with Watson throwing the ball. They have a Moore as a weapon. They've got uh, Cooper and Joku. The tight end is a good player. I mean, they, and this offensive line is good too now. They, like, they're not bad in the offensive line. I know they lost Conklin, but yeah. Jones stepped in and played well for him. So, yeah, that, that, to me, I thought they could win the North this summer. And I, even though without Chubb, I think if they could make a trade for another runner, I would do that. But they're really good. I had them as a playoff team too. The more I watch, and I do feel like the AFC is wide open, and we're going to talk about Miami in a little bit, but we've seen these great offense September, October teams, and then as the season goes on, yeah, doesn't look as great. 